Welcome to game number one in this best of five between Marine Lord and Lucifron. This is the grand finals of the second winter series of EGC TV. We're opening with High View, and down south we have Marine Lord playing as the blue English, and to the north it is going to be Lucifron playing as the Mongols in red. Yeah, and Mongols, one of the few games where they were not banned. So we will see them most likely from both players being picked at one point. Opening here up on high view will be interesting because English, they have shown to be quite a good pick against Mongols. I agree with that. There is a lot to love about the English and one of the few civilizations that can match up with the Mongols early archer and spearman production would be the English matching that with longbows. So I don't think that a good feudal age push is that legitimate from Lucifron. I would probably think more about the dimensions of... Uh, Got a defensive focused feudal age and then go into castle and start making things happen around that time. Could we see another double stable play like we have seen him do with the Abbasids before? <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm also curious. We certainly won't see a tower rush, that's for certain, simply because English with their villagers that can fight back with their bows so good against that and... I don't assume like a double stable will be the play. I think we need to mix it up. I think Mongols most of the time actually plays archers in this matchup. Looking at the base of Lucifron, his town center is very close to his wood line and it's very close to the Ovu, even reasonably distanced compared to his berries. But the big problem for him is that his gold mines look terrible. Both of them very close to each other, far from the town center. This is just going to be a nightmare to defend in the long run. Now, I think we will need to start towering this one up pretty damn early. Maybe even before our first production. Maybe we have to build a tower at like the four minute mark. Unless we obviously open stable and go for the horseman approach, like you mentioned. Feudal Age about to come in here for Marine Lord once he collects the remaining gold. And he is going up at the council hall, as it should be the case. Have you ever seen the other English landmark being used? Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, like, people are trying to get some crazy ideas, especially for an, a big upcoming 3v3 tournament that you might have heard, $20,000 on the line. And sometimes their other abilities are a bit better, so maybe we will see it a bit more over the la next two weeks, but in 1v1, it's always Council Hall, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that being used. The Council Hall is just... So versatile, helps a ton with the English. It's only one of the two landmarks that allows you to produce units on it in Feudal Age. So that, and of course the School of Cavalry is almost guaranteed in 1v1s for their respective civilizations. Hmm. Ooh. This one will be an extra TC for Marine Lord. A player that we normally know to be extremely aggressive. We've seen him play with professional scouts most of his games, lots of cavalry, and this time will be very defensively. Interesting approach, especially because Lucifron is going to spot those stone miners. So Lucifron knows exactly his opponent is going to play two town centers. So when it comes to playing the English, as those wolves, if they get the aggro, they might harass those villagers a tiny bit. So a bit of a wolf <laughs> rush over here by Lucifron. Ultimately, these will do minimal damage. So, you can do two things with the English here. You can either play 1 TC in Feudal Age and then go up to Castle Age with the King's Palace as your second town center. Or if you play two town centers in Feudal Age, which is the case for Marine Lord, then you can use the White Tower to age up, which will provide you with the ability to make Siege or Cavalry on it as well. So, it looks like it's going to be more eco-heavy approach from Marine Lord in Feudal Age and he's going to start applying pressure only in Castle, which helps for Lucifron, given how bad those gold mines are. And Lucifron actually plays early pasture next to the Ovo. This is weird as well. Ooh, is this Fast Castle? Sends four villages on gold now? This so, is interesting. When it comes to the early pasture play, this is something that has been uh, experimented with by players more and more recently. The idea is that if the pasture is in the influence radius of the Ovu, it trains the sheep faster. It's like one minute instead of one and a half minutes. So you drop an early pasture and you are going to have sheep trained for a long, long time. So you don't have to add a lot more pastures that early. Still, like, why do we have six villages on gold? 
table now. Scouts, maybe. Okay. Oh, could be professional kind of scouts being rushed. Be. Oh yeah, yeah, there's the yeah. stable. Okay. I mean, I like that approach if you think about it. At this point, Marine Lord is going to take his hunt on the right side. It's going to be guarded by a TC, so that's not something that Lucifron will be able to steal convincingly. But all three other hunts, Lucifron can bring that in, and uh, that's going to give him a very nice source of food. This town center is interesting on the right side, though, for Marine Lord, because it is in a very, very good position. I love how he's using a longbowman to kill the hunt, so he saves a couple of seconds on his villagers, even. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, plus he also dic dictates basically like where is the perfect spot to kill those. Because if the TC finishes, those deers basically run away from the villagers. Yeah, that's a very good point. He is killing those deer at a very, very good position. So you see, there's basically no distance between the deer carcasses and the town center. This town center is going to help cover the right side. It uh, does not give him insight into that stealth forest though, so it looks a little awkward because. Despite the fact that this is on the right side, it's not like Marine Lord has a lot of information gathered from the right. Hmm. And still staying on gold, although professional scouts are on the way. So yeah, I think this will be four scouts. It actually goes for six scouts even. Okay, well, it's 60 food difference, right? It's not the worst thing ever. And this one will be extremely passive. Well, give me an over under. When do you think the first unit is dying? Nine minutes. I will take the over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite easily. Marine Lord is coming in to harass those villagers on that gold mine, but that shouldn't really be a thing that much. There is enough villagers here for Lucifron to defend. He can send the Khan back to help out. Although, if Lucifron isn't paying attention, he could start losing villagers and we could get that under. That may have been a very generous over-under, now that I think about it, because at this point, we're already at seven and a half minutes. We had some longbows out, but Marine Lord isn't moving out with those. And a barracks for Marine Lord. A couple of spearmen coming out. He's got a fairly sizable force of longbows, but he's playing very defensive with them. Yeah, he obviously knows, okay, moving out now would just mean you underproduced army. That's not typically your thing. You also have a defensive tower, so... Just minimal investment and trying to defend fields like the reasonable choice for Marine Lot. Part of the reason why uh, Lucifrom was very heavy on the gold department is because he's also grabbing wheelbarrow. Wouldn't even be surprised to see survival techniques being popped at this point for him as the first patch of hunt comes back. So looking at the resources and that's where things are going to get interesting. We already have 600 food and 300 gold in the bank for Lucifron, and he hasn't used a single bit of his stone pretty much. He used a tiny bit for the scouts, but not an awful lot, so he's going to have a lot to use for double training at the beginning of Castledge. He can get double Lancers or double Man at Arms out quite nicely and still squeeze in. Oh! Oh, under it! Under! Under! Minutes. under. The longbow has moved out, and that is the Khan being lost. So we oh. can say that Lucifron is going to be down with that for two minutes. Not ideal at all. Longbow is now moving out. Luckily for Lucifron, he's got the tower up. I didn't know Lutzfront was that bad. Okay, my, my <laughs> mistake. Well, he can't look at every spot on the map at the same time. Oh no, don't don't start with Khan jokes. Please. <laughs> uh, this could get too wild. Do that with another on Lucas, please. <laughs> Poof. I can't take those anymore. No, oh, boy. I fell for my own. Oh, yeah, it's, it's getting too bad. It's too bad. No. Let's stop right here. Eight villagers on the gold mine, a tower can only fit five. So technically speaking, Marine Lord has a chance to potentially snipe one or two villagers here because not everyone can fit into that tower. He's looping around on the longer side and Lucifron spots those archers, but he hasn't jumped into the tower yet. It was a little slow to react, but he won't lose any more villagers. So he's going to be fine for the time being. And there is Castle Age coming in with the step redoubt, as one would expect. Okay, okay. All makes sense. Goes for the far away gold at the right hand side corner now, Mr. Lutifron. A bit surprising to me. I feel like he doesn't feel confident with that gold mine uh, being harassed by those longbows. 
and he probably just wants to make sure that he can get some sort of gold mining going there. What's a little more surprising is that that Gur is being built here. So he's going to have a Gur on his starting gold mine. He's going to have a stepper doubt and another Gur. And ideally, you want that stepper doubt to be on the gold. Speaking of which, Longos will be able to pick off two villagers underneath it. And that castle is being heavily delayed by Marine Lord. Looking pretty rough, I'm not, not going to lie, for Lucifron here. Because that castle is being delayed really heavily now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And that could be another dead will. Indeed, Khan goes pretty aggressively again. And those six longbows, don't tell me they'll get another Khan snipe. Wow! He just can't keep it alive. Stop it! <laughs> oh boy. Separate up, still coming in here, but those longbows are getting great value for themselves. And we already have a villager advantage for Marine Lord because he's on two town centers. And that castle is being delayed so heavily. To a point where Marine Lord might even catch up. 33 villagers to 51 right now. And more villagers dying. Holy moly. Oh boy. Do you think it would have been better for Lucifron to just make a couple of horsemen here and fight this one off before trying to build that step red up? He's going to clean this up now with the horsemen incoming and of course the scouts. But his castle was delayed so heavily and the casualties he took is not something that he can recuperate for. It just should have been a bit further, maybe like north of the TC. But yeah, that's obviously so easy to say for us. Marine Lords having lots of resources will go up to Castle Edge pretty soon as well. Night production should be pretty solid, but actually he goes for Man at Arms. Man at Arms makes some sense over here, obviously, for him. Although the English won't be very disappointed to take that because the English do have a unique upgrade for their Man at Arms, the clad armor, which gives them more melee armor. So. If the Mongo player only goes for Man at Arms, the English can match that with their own Man at Arms and be completely happy about it. Yeah. Now, the landmark being rushed out with 13 villagers goes for the White Tower. So it feels like, okay, 3 tc boom is not needed. But maybe can add some siege. And obviously, a great defense knows how far ahead he is in economy. And they spotted the man-at-arms and he is going for his own. He's already getting the early man-at-arms upgrade. Obviously, with the Vanguard man-at-arms available in Dark Age, it means that he needs to upgrade his man-at-arms to early man-at-arms in Feudal Age first. And then he also needs to get the Castlash man-at-arms upgrade in. Plus, of course, the Iron Clad or the Clad Armor upgrade. So, it takes a lot of time to get all of those upgrades in before his man-at-arms uh, will become better than the ones from Lucifron. Yeah, but I think he will have enough time, will have obviously the TCs, now the White Tower as well, and should be a reasonable defense here. Yeah, I don't really see a push happening. Oh, actually, Mangonal aggression here by Lutifon. He knows that he has to go wild now. He needs to go aggressive. Luckily for Marine Lord, he's got the White Tower, and that helps a ton when it comes to getting some Spring Gods out. Marine Lord is also going for his own Mangonal, so he's probably expecting some crossbows to maybe mixed in here by Lucifron. But as things stand, it is just Manganol, Man at Arms, and Spring Old Aggression. Currently, it is 60 villagers against 36, though. But Rain Lord's Gold Mine is heavily exposed here, and that Manganol gets a beautiful shot on top of those villagers. Oh, good reaction here by Marine Lord. Needs to pull those. Obviously, they survive one shot. Could have made a wild argument for waiting for two Manganols, but obviously, that would have taken quite some time. Marine Lord now moves his villagers to the left hand side. He needs to grab that gold mine and. Lucifron, if he realizes that his opponent has to take gold elsewhere, he's going to start sending a couple of knights left and right, trying to deny gold from Marine Lord, because one thing that Marine Lord doesn't have is safety for that gold. That White Tower is just a little too much at the back. It's unable to shoot at the incoming units right now. Mm -hmm. Just feels like Marine Lord doesn't really have the proper answers right now. Okay, I like Springles. But will that be enough? I think Lucifron is heavily behind. But it also feels like he might get some damage in. By the way, 30 villagers behind. He is behind indeed. He's got 29 army against 19. And he already has the castle age upgrades in though. And of course he's got the cheaper units thanks to the double training. So he can make up for some of that villager deficit. Still, now we have Manganols coming in. And uh, we have men at arms out already for Marine Lord. Not a single crossbowman coming out of that white tower, though, so I'm a little surprised how underwhelming uh, Marine Lord's army is right now. Yeah, let's let that TC die. Only one villager will fall. 
Not that attack. Oh. Tricky moves. This is getting way more interesting than I thought. Yeah, because Lucifron's eco isn't great, but he's now doing a lot of damage to Marine Lord. Marine Lord had to relocate his gold mine. His lumberjacks had to be relocated. He had to abandon a full mill with nine farms. And also, every single building that Lucifron burns down also gives food and gold for him. So suddenly, oh. if you look at the populations, it's getting better and better for Lucifron. Wouldn't it be like super easy for him to snipe just the mill and all the farms? Especially like ground attack mangonels, like three shot that whole, all those nine buildings. I'm not sure if you're getting the bounty for burning down farms, but if you do, 100%, that's a great move. Even if you don't, taking down the mill and lumber camp would be great, especially because mangonels and mana terms do quite a lot of damage against buildings. Looks like it's a retreat for now for Lucifron, which buys some time for Marine Lord to build up his forces. Clad armor, not coming in for him though. Instead, it's just a handful of men at arms and spring golds. Ay, ay, ay. It feels a bit like a missed opportunity there. Just some easy damage, especially if he's now going back, goes for another spring gold. Lots of villagers exposed to the left hand side and lots of low HP ones as well. Indeed, many of those villagers took a massive beating from that initial mangonel shot. Now, Lucifron is going to have a tough time breaking through that White Tower, so he's going to have to start pushing that left side. But as you said, that's very much exposed over here. And the, his scout will just now find Marine Lord's Eco on the left. Still, he is just retreating so much here. It's a little surprising that he's not playing a little more aggressively, given how much behind he is economically. Yeah, I don't like how he's taking the foot off the gas here. Did he think he did enough damage killing the TC? He barely killed any villagers. He should know how, that he's still heavily behind an economy. It's 72 wills against 46. Yeah, that's looking rough for Lucifron. He has gotten a prayer then top. Makes me wonder if he just wants to force his opponent out of his base and go for a sacred site. He's got one mangonel hidden in the middle of Stealth Forest. Maybe he wants to do a master move here and just get the sacred site. Force Marine Lord to go in with the men at arms or archers to take it back and then get a sneaky mangonel shot in. Uh, but that's kind of counting on your opponent to do a mistake when he's not even forced to do any moves, really. Right, sacred sides won't be a, like really contest. You need to go for all three, but left hand side is far away. I don't really see Lucifron putting himself into a better position right now. Well, he's got three knights coming into the left side, and that's a ton of villagers exposed here. There are two towers in here. One of them has weapon emplacements as well. A couple of men-at-arms. So I don't think a lot of villagers will die. But these knights will definitely have a chance to do some killing. And look at that on the right side. We have a con picking off villagers on the wood line. Those are small details, but those are things that uh, Lucifron needs to come back into this game. Uh, and those seven longbows. Let's see if they can kill the shaman. All the uh, knights. arms chasing down. The knights are coming in, and it looks like Marine Lord's reaction was a little too slow over here. There was at least three, four villagers killed. I think at this point for Lucifron, you gotta sacrifice those knights and get as many kills as you can. Uh, he's trying to get away with one, and feels like yes, he can, and that's a lot of idle villager time as well. Behind this one, the longbows are getting cleaned up. I don't think they'll be able to take that shaman down, so Lucifron getting that relic back in safety. Having relics and sacred sites is definitely one way to cut into that uh, villager deficit. But still, Marine Lord should be in a way better position. All of a sudden, look at populations. Lucifron 107, Marine Lord 109. It's so close. It is so close, and Lucifron is floating a ton of resources. He's got 1,300 food, 600 gold, and 700 wood in the bank. So he would be able to get a lot more army on the battlefield if he wanted to, grabbing some upgrades right now. Feels like he just wants to make one decisive push happen. He's bringing in the relics right now. Man at arms, though, coming in for Marine Lord. And if I'm not mistaken, they've already gotten the clad armor. So from this point on, even numbers will probably favor Marine Lord unless the mangonels can even things out for Lucifron. Oh, well, feels not unlikely that two mangonels will get some shots in, make it a third mangonel, make it a fourth mangonel. And all of a sudden, Lucifron? He plays this one like he has 20 villages ahead. I'm so confused by this playstyle. The impressive thing is how much he can achieve with how little villagers. He went down to like 34 villagers in the middle of the game. Here comes the push from the man-at-arms that will jump on the villagers. Mangonels setting up though, and that's three mangonels. 
and four Springholds as well to snap down the opponent's Springholds. Quite a decent amount of siege coming in from Marine Lord too, though, but it seems like he's gonna be unable to push this hill here. Okay, meanwhile, double raid here. Lutifon with one knight, one scout. And Marine Lord has enough of its walls to the right-hand side off now. Indeed, he's walling both sides as uh, both players are getting ready for a long game, but a long game here helps Lucifron quite a bit because Lucifron was the one quite a bit behind. And while he's behind by 10 villagers, he's got the step right out, which obviously helps a ton. And honestly, when it comes to resource income per minute, now Lucifron is taking over. Oh, 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 that's going to be one hell of a fight if both players deciding to commit here. Now adding another TC again is Marine Lord. Expands quite a bit here to the left-hand side, which feels exposed, but that's why he's putting a keep down. The scariest thing for both players is the stealth forest. Neither of them have a scout here, so seeing deep into those stealth forests will be difficult. So anytime you could have an army popping out right next to you. So you got to be very, very careful on how you micro and how you control your army here. So true. I'm a bit sad that we don't see too many towers here from the Mongol player. Trying to give you some aura there. Could have been a good choice. By the way, still only one relic. Doesn't excite me too much. Speaking of the aura, the English could have done towers as well, as uh, we have Lucifron coming in for the second relic in the middle right now. Looking at the Marine Lord, he's up to two Town Centers once again. But look at Lucifron. That is an Imperial Age coming in with the White Stupa. Okay. Interesting that he feels like he can afford this. And what is he doing in Imp? Is it just like sprinkled range? Is it elite men at arms? I By the way, the both. wood line at the starting to see is horrible. Oh yeah, that, that's terrible. And a weird thing is that he's got the girl that he could move up, but he's probably focused uh, elsewhere. Same thing over here on the gold mine. The step right out hasn't been moved, so it's not as efficient as it could possibly be. Another knight coming in on the right side. Every once in a while, Lucifron sends one or two knights to try and probe the eco of his opponent. And he's going to spot that Marine Lord is all the way back, so he's going to have no trouble getting up to Imperial Age without any kind of fighting. Second Siege Workshop kind of implies that he is going for the extra range, or is it going, like, maybe he goes for stronger mangonels? I'm so curious to see what's the game plan here. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit, because this is an upgrade I've never seen being researched. But the Roller Shutter Triggers has an improved version as well, which gives you plus 3 range as opposed to 2 and he's going for it. I wasn't even sure before this game that you have that upgrade, uh, <laughs> improved version, but there it is. And that actually makes it the second longest range sprinkled in the game. It is still better for the Rus. Rus has 13 and a half range with full upgrades. <laughs> Okay, and he also goes for siege works, so more health and more armor. Mm -hmm. Is this the play? Are those like more range sprinkles that that important? Well, looking at Marine Lord's army, he has a lot of siege as well. I think that siege could be quite decisive because at this point. It's going to come down to whoever is able to keep their mangonels alive and just get the mangonel shots in on the opponent's men-at-arms. And when you have longer range springholds, it's a little easier to snipe down the opponent's springholds and men-at-arms. Looking at Marine Lord real quickly. Is he aging up? Looks like he isn't, although his resources aren't looking too bad, so he could get to Imperial pretty fast. And once he gets to Imperial Age, he would have the passive gold trickle from farms, which is a massive power spike second siege workshop coming in for him. I feel like Lucifron has a window here to push, but that window is fairly big. Yeah, I agree. At least like three minutes, I would think, before he can really fight some imp army. And now he's towering everything up. Lucifron sits at pop 150 against 170. So slight disadvantage, but it feels like the better army. It feels like a way better army. And it's an imp army versus a castle age army. And the spring goes already open up on the ones of Marine Lord. It is not just a free tiles advantage right now, it is five tiles because those are still castle age springles with eight range. Or oh, ten range, excuse me, uh, excuse me. It is just a free 
tile difference, but still, oh. that's considerable. <laughs> that's absolutely enough. And how do you even engage this? I, I don't really see it. If, if we have one Bombard here for Lucifron, he's just ruffle stomping everything. Does he even need a Bombard though? Four Manganos are no joke. And here comes the fun thing for the Mongols. They can burn down those buildings and get all the bounty. And now the Man at Arms from Marine Lord are coming out. But those Manganos just have so much firepower here. Khan also popping the defense arrow. And the Manganos are slaughtering all the forces of Marine Lord. Springholds still sniping down all siege that comes from Marine Lord. And this is looking like a slaughter. Villagers are being pulled to kill Manganos, but even them are insufficient. Two Manganos still alive for Marine Lord. Or Lucifron, and that's gonna be a cleanup by Lucifron. He might have just taken the game. Holy moly, you camped 25 minutes to die like this? What a crazy army composition by Lucifron! Oh boy, so many things to talk about. You look at English, you look at Mongols, two civilizations that are known for being great with early aggression, yet we have barely saw any kind of fighting going on, and then. Lucifron just comes in with an absolutely crazy army. With that extra range on the Springholds, he could snipe down the opponent's siege and then just move them with the men at arms. Just look at this. At like minute 13, we had less than 10 army for Marine Lord and around 16 for Lucifron. Barely any army made. This was basically one big push and then GG. How was he 30 villages ahead and didn't benefit at all? He didn't get map control. Yeah, he had three relics, but no contest on the sacred sites. A reload played so campy. It was such a weird game. There's 5,000 more gold in the bank in the end for Lucifron, but his opponent gathered 3,000 more food, 5,000 more good. So you would have assumed that Marine Lord is able to leverage the fact that he's got way more villagers, but for whatever reason, Lucifron was able to utilize those resources a little bit better, and he nailed that imp timing, got the technology advantage, and then just steamrolled Marine Lord. Marine Lord played very defensive the entire game. I don't think that he had any aggression other than uh, the few longbows that hit that uh, step 